move on to our second uh, speaker of the um, later afternoon, um, Dr. Jason Sao, again from Sweet Um His presentation will focus on calcium aluminate supported nickel catalyst for steam reforming of hydrocarbon. I think uh, we get enough for steam reforming already now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add a little bit more here. Yeah, the title is Calcium Aluminate Supported Nickel as for steam reforming generally. Syn gas, syn gas combination of CO and hydrogen. Red is pretty popular for fuel cell and the fish chop synthesis. So get a lot of attention recently. The process, uh, we already talked about a little bit. John talked about it here. And uh, this uh, flow diagram is a traditional syn gas uh, generation plant. Uh, Steam and uh, hydrocarbon, usually natural gas, mixed together, prohibited, and go into a gas fired box. Usually, uh, there's a tubular reactor here, we call reformer, and uh, at a very high temperature, uh, they react to generate some gas. And uh, the rest of them just take care of the CO and the uh, purification part. I try to talk about a little bit more about the, this process. What's going on here? Okay. Uh, take methane as an example. It's a very strong in the thermal reaction. And uh, thermodynamically, at high temperature, you get more CO and hydrogen. So the conventional reformer usually operate at a very high temperature, which introduce a big challenge for the catalyst design. I push the wrong button. Okay. And uh, because the, a lot of heat leader for the reaction, the process usually is limited by heat transfer. And uh, therefore, you need to use uh, tubular reformer to get as much heat transfer area as possible because this you want to solve this problem in, you introduce a lot of problem actually it's too high compared with the diameter you would cause pressure job problems and in order to solve the problem uh, pressure job problem you need to design your catalyst in different shape to eliminate, to minimize the pressure drop across the reformer. And uh, this uh, factory reaction usually is strongly limited by mass transfer. And uh, usually we think this reaction is first order uh, for methane, and uh, because strong mass transport limitation, the reactor rate that you get is proportional to the geometry surface area of catalyst and uh, proportional to the square root of the intrinsic activity and uh, the defensivity. So to design the catalyst, you want to attack the surface area. This is by designing the catalyst with the highest geometry surface area to increase the intrinsic activity, this everybody does for catalyst development. This goes on without saying. <laughs> and the, the facility, you want to design the catalyst with the right post structure to balance the dispersion and the uh, limited mass transport resistance. We will talk about it a little bit later on, on each aspect. So, this reforming system is very complicated. Yeah, intrinsic activity is you can get uh, from metal, and uh, you need to take it into consideration of support and their interaction. And uh, it's not enough. The apparent activity we talk about is in order to get a good activity, apparent activity, that's what you get in the real world. You need to design the shape and the, the carrier 
formulation. What we see here is actually the conventional skin reforming catalyst is made by impregnation vehicle and uh, the pore structure is come from the carrier. And uh, we mentioned about that in early uh, presentation, carbon formation is a big issue for the steam reforming, not only steam reforming or the syngas generation process. And uh, the support, the metal, free rolls air, and also promoters can reduce the potential of carbon formation. And uh, this is a high temperature process and uh, the stability of the catalyst is a big, uh, big issue here. And uh, especially the thermal stability, you, you don't want to start with a very really high surface area material and then put on stream for a couple of days or it dies. You don't want to do it. So uh, the stability of the catalyst is really an issue for steam reforming design, uh, catalyst design. And uh, we mentioned the pressure drop is achieved by design the shape and uh, definitely you want as much geometry surface area as possible, but uh, you also need to pay attention to on the physical integrity. You don't want to get a very weak body and uh, put it into the reactor and uh, destroy it immediately. And uh, finally, heat transfer Heat transfer has more to do with the uh, actually the process design, the reactor design, but the catalyst shape and the, uh, the formulation do have something to do with the uh, heat transfer of the whole process. So I could uh, re-emphasize the process a little bit and uh, talk about the real issue here. Uh, focus on four catalysts here. The C11 line is uh, so can is a conventional uh, syngas generation catalyst, reformer catalyst. It's an aluminum base, basically has been treated at a really high temperature and uh, really stable already. And uh, there's a g 9 it's a potassium promoted calcium illuminated catalyst. And the two other catalysts, it's just a calcium illuminated catalyst with a different uh, uh, calcium level. You can see here, just give a gender, general properties here. I will talk about the each individual with, with them in more detail later on. The core volume, the alumina based catalyst, pretty low, less than 0.1 cc per gram. And with calcium illuminate, you can double it and even triple it. The surface area, also pretty low, at about three square meter per gram. And uh, you get about six times higher here. Four times high here. Uh, we match liquid dispersion by hydrogen absorption. You can see here after reduction, aluminum based catalyst has pretty big liquid crystal, and the cash illuminate type catalyst relatively small. Why we get that? I will discuss that in more detail later on. And uh, pay attention to here as, as well a little bit. With uh, on the alpha, alum alpha alumina type catalyst, you pretty much get a 100% of reduction here, nickel reduction. But the cathode illuminate depends on the level of kerosene in the in the catalyst. You get a, anywhere from 50% to 90%. Uh, XRD data here, this is actually fresh catalyst without reduction, so you say nickel oxide. The nickel oxide crystal size is pretty much the same here, not, not a really big difference. Uh, alumina is a little bit bigger, but not so significant. And uh, for alumina, obviously you say alumina and the nickel oxide, but for cathode alumina, you say even the Calcium aluminate phase. Uh, this model of calcium aluminate actually should have a two here. Uh, the calcium by aluminate, calcium aluminate or hibernate, 
depending on which formulation you gather, you, you get the kinds of combination here. Talk about the pore distribution and pore water. We talk about the pore water a little bit. Alumina has pretty uh, small pore water. And also, look at the pore size. All the pores are larger than 1,000 one angstrom. And uh, the density, the density is low as well. Look at the cash luminate. Usually, you will have a bimodal distribution. Here, here, and uh, this here. This one, you have small here. Uh, we talk about this uh, mass transport limited process. You want to uh, reduce mass transport limitation. So you need large pores, and uh, the porosity, the higher the better. <laughs> so this alumina, you only have large pore. In the cast illuminate, you have small pore, and the combined with large pore. So the small pore actually provides a lot of surface for you to uh, disperse nickel. So you will have higher nickel dispersion. And the, the large pores definitely will give you a pathway for uh, reactant to diffuse into the system and uh, fully utilize the, the catalytic function of the cat. Uh, the SEM pictures look at the, what the structure really looks like. And uh, this is the cat illuminate, multi-phase. And uh, you can see the cat illuminate, it has some kind of uh, less porous structure network. We believe this gives you good physical properties for the uh, final catalyst. This very porous area, even the pore size, Compared to alumina, you can see here, a oh, lot of area is pretty dense. It's with pores uh, in small range. And uh, there's kind of cracking here, large pore here. Look a little bit more closer. This uh, alumina again, the pores are formed between the alumina crystal and uh, the strength of the particle is comes from the alumina crystal centrally and uh, at high temperature it's bridge out the small particles bridge out and then give you uh, the strength so the mechanism is a little bit different though, for the strength contribution And uh, this XRD uh, information here, obviously, this uh, has straight out the uh, from cancellation. You have nickel oxide, and uh, you get a different phase for the cancel aluminum based carries here. And uh, we treat this catalyst actually still reforming, and then accelerate the deactivation treatment, try to save how the uh, nickel and the spot support are impacted. And uh, you can see here, uh, it's nickel aluminate formation for all the catalysts, but not much difference here, or have nickel aluminate formation. And uh, you still have a little bit of nickel oxide here because the treatment of this. But you, you, you do have a lot of them. Uh, reduce nickel after the treatment. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the dispersion a little bit more. For the fresh carries, look at the SEM. You can say this alumina-based carries, this cash alumina-based carries. Uh, we believe this white dot is nickel oxide. You look at the size, not much difference here. After reduction, let's see what happened. This is the alumina based catalyst. You can see the liquid crystal increased tremendously. Just as we said, 
we, 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 we found that in, in the table before, uh, it get, I believe before reduction, nickel oxide is about 200 Armstrong, after reduction is about 800. This one started with about 200, and let's see what happened here. Keep pretty much the same. Uh, we try to explain that, and uh, my explanation is this uh, cathode luminate have nickel and the cathode luminate detector uh, strongly. And uh, remember that not all the nickel and cathode luminate can be reduced. This unreduced nickel oxide sits between the reduced nickel and the carrier and hold the reduced nickel to when it migrate at high temperature. This is what happened, what, uh, what I believe. So this is why cathode luminate gave you a higher dispersion and smaller nickel particle after reduction. Let's look at the PPR actually. This fresh cats when you put it into uh, reactor and reduce that with hydrogen. Uh, the alumina based catalyst can be reduced at a low temperature. That's the main peak here, and uh, a small peak at about the, this, this peak is out around, the, uh, I believe, 380 degree centigrade. And uh, this small peak here, around 510 degrees Celsius, and uh, there's a peak here at 810. Obviously, for cast illuminate, there's some intermediate species. But we believe that's three major species. Let's look at the treated catalyst and the do TPR again. Obviously, we want to uh, reoxidize this first and then do TPR again. You can see clearly three species. And uh, what we believe, this low temperature reduced uh, nickel oxide, some kind of stand standalone species in the interactor with the catalyst carrier at all. And uh, there's some weakly interactor that nickel oxide that can be reduced at 510, and uh, some strongly interactor nickel oxide can be reduced at 810. And uh, also, you can see uh, alumina has less, and uh, even at the harsh treatment, has uh, alumina has more, and also has has luminate and more. Let's explain why after reduction, the cast luminate get a higher dispersion. Finally, let's look at the activity. Uh, every day we work, we, we try to get the high activity. Uh, first of all, we use uh, methane steam reforming at the uh, steam to carbon ratio three, but uh, that is a uh, Produce any carbon and also uh, at a pretty high space velocity, which is about 10 times of the conventional reformer. And uh, the four carriers that we tested are pretty active, all pretty active. You want to distinguish them, you have to go to low temperatures, and uh, you already get a pretty high space velocity. Obviously, you can go even higher, but uh, in this case, we have to go to low temperatures and uh, distinguish how this catalyst do. And uh, this is the numbers. And in order to compare them, we uh, take a temperature, say how the uh, activity uh, is at uh, this temperature. Basically, at 800 Fahrenheit or 427 degrees Celsius. And uh, the K calculated by this formulation, uh, the alumina catalyst gave you about four, uh, 42,000, 43,000. And uh, the cast illuminate, depending on the catalyst, you get a, or higher than that. Even this catalyst, I don't know if you guys uh, remember or not, uh, this one has a pretty low nickel loading, that's why this gave uh, lower numbers here, but uh, even this is higher than that, 
So in order to fairly compare the activity, we try to uh, divide this key number by the total nickel surface area we matched. It comes out, say here, uh, even G91 gave you pretty high key number here, uh, the, some kind of turnover number here is lower because the high surface area, the potassium somehow promoted the dispersion of the, the nickel. But uh, as the literature said, the potassium or sodium, these metals poison the catalyst. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why they say even when we look at the turnover frequency, they can say that. But uh, overall, you may not be safe. You may not say that. But uh, this is what they are talking about, the standard. And uh, compare cast aluminate and the alumina, you still say higher activity on cast alumina. We change feed to perfect. And uh, again, all the cats are pretty active, active and uh, up to, let's say, 730 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit. This cast aluminum rich equilibrium. And uh, C11 rich equilibrium at about uh, 780 or something. And uh, again, cast aluminum is more active than alum alumina based catalyst. Let's for actually reforming activity. Why I say reforming activity is safely, it will decompose to methane and the methane will reform, will be reformed to uh, natural gas, uh, to CO, CO2, hydrogen, this kind of stuff. And uh, look at here, we take into account of methane plus CO, CO2, and uh, it's, uh, Big difference here for the C11 catalyst, the alumina based catalyst, and the, uh, the cast alumina based catalyst. Basically, the cast alumina based catalyst gave, have higher fracking uh, activity. So, this gave you higher uh, methane, actually, C1 stop. So, it's more active. Uh, cast alumina compared with the alumina based catalyst because the pore structure and the, the dispersion of the, uh, the nickel. And also, we talk about carbon <coughs> formation is a big issue for all the syngas generation process, and uh, we match uh, carbon resistance by say at high temperature, usually the process at high temperature. Uh, or not all, the majority are at high temperature. The fields are obviously will go to low, uh, low, low pressure, sorry about that. And uh, we know uh, pressure play a big role in carbon formation, so we look at it as high, at high pressure. Uh, use hexane as feed, and uh, we by change steam to carbon ratio, go from uh, high number to low number, and the to look at the, where the cats start to form carbon. And the C11 at 5.5, you start to see carbon formation. And for the G91, because of potassium, and the cats illuminate, the, the low number. And uh, for the two cats illuminate, you get the 2.5 degree. So the cooking resistance is better for the cats illuminate, which, allow, which allows you to uh, operate uh, your reformer at a lower <coughs> steam to carbon ratio, or you can treat the uh, heavier stuff. And uh, also, uh, our testing group put on this figure here, actually, pretty much same stuff, just keep it longer. This steam to carbon three, G91 doesn't form any carbon, C11 get up carbon immediately, when you decrease steam to carbon ratio, G91 get Formation. And uh, finally, we are a catalyst uh, manufacturer. We want to sell catalysts. So we try to figure different applications. So we design different shape catalysts. It's all the shape made by cast aluminate and the small 
So first, we can make as small as two millimeter, three millimeter stuff, and some fancy shape to provide a higher geometry surface area. And uh, we can make a big stuff as well. This stuff has diameter anywhere up, uh, up to 32 uh, millimeter. So, try to summarize a little bit of what we, uh, I have talked about. This cast aluminum has higher porosity and the more balanced poor distribution. And also, you can say stronger metal support infection. And uh, this has larger surface area because of those, has better metal dispersion. And uh, also, we should have show better carbon formation resistance. And uh, I didn't show what I, what I didn't show here is the, the thermal properties. Actually, we did the test and it shows uh, this cast aluminum has better thermal stability in terms of uh, integrity and uh, thermal shock resistance. And also, everything get a pretty good uh, mechanical properties. For example, the three millimeter uh, ring, uh, ring, not ring, spheres. You can reach about 30, 40 pounds of crash strength, which is significant better than the aluminum gas. Finally, I have tried to uh, thank Stokami Incorporate, uh, allow me to present this material here, and a group of people uh, make a tremendous contribution for this uh, work. Thanks, and uh, I would like to take any question if you After high temperature treatment and uh, low surface area, I said it's pretty low. Uh, what is the best catalyst? <laughs> best lead, a, a catalyst is not exact. Huh? It's not there yet. We need to find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people are us employed. <laughs> Because if I'm not mistaken, uh, G91 has a low heat about this cooking resistance. It's high activity as well, actually. In, I heard the activity is higher. You say low activity is turnover figures a little bit lower. Low well, activity is turn nickel, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 you're right. But the overall result, you can say, because the higher nickel surface area, the activity you get is, is higher, actually. And I have another question. How do you determine the uh, reducibility of the nickel? What temperature do you use? Uh, for what? For calculation or for reduction? Or for reduction. Reducibility. Uh, this is general TPR. I think it's around 500 C, uh, 600 C. Not, not, not really high <coughs> for the reducibility. For, for this part. Yeah. You showed um, propane reforming results. Uh, did you notice any carbon formation on the alpha aluminum material? I'm yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know that part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, there's a carbon formation on the on aluminum. Not sure here about that. So it ran, but not for very long. <laughs> it doesn't last long for 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 aluminum for a property a property from reforming. You might add three uh steam to carbon three. It doesn't last 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 long. Any other questions? If not, please have a